All right, so I'd like to uh, start tonight with just a quick introduction to electric current. And if you're following along in the book, it's just the beginning of chapter 17. But before, we've been dealing with electric charges that are standing still. Here, electric current is really what we think of when we think of electricity. We usually don't, you know, every once in a while you'll think of your you know, hair standing on end, things like that. But electric current is really what we, we think about when we think about uh, electricity. And I'm going to define the symbol for electricity, and well, I didn't define it, but somebody else did, as I. So that's basically the intensity of the current is where that comes from. I don't think it's a very good uh, explanation, but oh well. We already, already use C for capacitor, so I is going to be current. Um, so that, that is basically the average electric current is the amount of charge moving through in a specific amount of time. How many coulombs of charge per second? And basically, as we shrink that time interval to zero, it's just the instantaneous amount of current. So capital I by itself is just the instantaneous current. How much is flowing through right now? And the units of that are coulombs per second, which we're going to call amperes, uh, named for a, a French scientist named Ampere. And the symbol that is for is A. We use it usually gets shortened down to say this many this many amps of current instead of amperes. So basically, what's going on um, as things are moving on? We have electrons that are moving along. They're moving at some certain speed. Um, the the total number of charges per volume is kind of dependent on the material that you have. So the total amount of charge is the number of electrons per volume times the charge of one electron times the volume. Basically, you have a wire with area A, we sweep out a distance D, and then the time is just distance divided by volume. So if we rearrange those things, you figure out that kind of the, the basic definition for electric current is the number of charges per cubic meter, the per volume, times the charge of one electron times the area of the wire multiplied by how fast they're moving. And if you look at that, it turns out in most wires, the electrons are moving very, very slow, you know, less than a meter per second in most cases. All right. Um, to allow these electrons to move, we need some source of energy. In, in general, we'll think of a battery or plugging something into the wall. And basically what's happening, we're going from a, a region of high potential to low potential. So these electrons are being moved along, pushing with a current I through some something that uses up that energy. Uh, so as a motor or a light bulb or, I don't know, a person in an electric chair, whatever we have that's going to be using up that energy. But you need a full circuit. If this wire is broken anywhere, the current's not going to flow. That's an important thing to remember. But basically the idea is there's some input energy, kind of makes a generator, moves charges along and causes some something to happen. It, energy is transferred. Really, basically everything you learn in physics is the idea of energy transfer from one area to another. Um, and then a British physicist named George Ohm basically figured out that most things re, uh, resist current kind of in a linear fashion. And so to make them go, you need to have add energy to the system. And so the more energy you give, the more voltage you get, the greater the current's going to be. And then Ohm realized there was some property of each material, and he called it the resistance. Um, the symbol for that is capital R, which would slow down the current. And so Ohm's law defines current as the voltage divided by resistance, or even resistance is voltage divided by current. Though most people think of it as V equals IR, the voltage. I like to keep the delta there because I don't like uh, equations that end up with, you know, V is equal to 40 volts, where it's V is equal to 40 V, and I get really confused easily. So that means our units of resistance are going to be volts per amp, which we call ohms, and the symbol for that is omega. It's a Greek letter, so ohms and omega kind of works together. Um, things that follow Ohm's law, the voltage, if you graph voltage versus current, it's going to be a straight line, and the slope of that is going to be the resistance. 
a non-ohmic device, if you graph voltage and versus current, you're going to get something non-linear. Whether it's a parabola, whether it's something that doesn't start till a specific value, it's hard to tell.